Uh, welcome back, everybody, for another episode of Nobel Prizes. This time, the Nobel Prize in Physics from 1923 was actually given to uh, Robert Millikan, which who's a very interesting scientist who uh, won the prize for his work on the elementary charge of electricity and on the photoelectric effect. So he furthered some other people's work. He got it more refined. He did things a lot better. We're going to get to that. But he was much, much, much more... Uh, than just a guy in a lab who figured some stuff out and he won the prize. This was a very important scientist for a lot of reasons that did things uh, for universities and places that people still want to send their kids to that are still world-class and well-known. And they weren't well world-class and well-known before people like this showed up and, and made them that way. So let's take a look. So first, let's talk about what he won the prize for. Then we'll talk about why it's important. Then we'll talk about what else he did. So the experiment he ran, which now undergrads which run all over the world, has become known as the Millikan oil drop experiment. The scientists running the experiment observed tiny electrically charged droplets of oil between two parallel modal surfaces, which essentially form a capacitor. Those plates were oriented horizontally, one in the top of the one near the top of the apparatus, one near the bottom of the chamber, and then a mist of atomized oil droplets are introduced through a little hole in, near the top plate. And they will be ionized, which essentially means you have electrons ripped off of them because now from previous prize winners we fully understand how to do that we understand what it means we understand the importance of it and in the case of the original experiments uh it, this was done by using x-rays now it's done with electrical charges but they used x-rays and the result of that was the apparatus makes them negatively charged as you form that that uh, uh ion now the experiments are done first with zero uh, applied electric field, which is what you get from the x-rays, and the velocity of the falling oil droplets are measured. Now, at terminal velocity, the drag force equals the gravitational force. As both forces depend on the radius in different ways, the electrical and the, the, the gravitational, the radius of the droplet and therefore the mass and gravitational force can be determined using known density of the oil. Next, they apply a voltage inducing an electric field that was applied to both plates, and they adjust that until the drops are suspended in air in a mechanical equilibrium. So they're not falling, they're not rising, and that indicates the electric force and the gravitational force are in balance. Using that information, using that known electric field that they've just applied and measured as they, they ran it into the apparatus, Millikan and his, his uh, co-worker Fletcher could determine the charge on the oil droplet. And by repeating that experiment over a whole bunch of droplets, they confirmed that the charges were all a very small integer multiples of a certain base value, which they turned out, they said, was 1.59 times 10 to the minus six, uh, 19 coulombs, which is less than 1% different from the currently accepted value of 1.602 times 10 to the 19th coulombs that we use in labs all over the world today. They, they, what they did was they proposed that this was the magnitude of the negative charge on a single electron, and by God, they were right. Now, why was all that important? Well, they established a lot of things when they ran this experiment. <clears throat> First was they established there actually is a quantization of electrical charge, that there is a fundamental unit of charge. And that also applies to, they, they also managed to measure that charge very precisely. So we're in a world where before this, we thought atoms were the smallest thing that were going on. Before the, the, the series of Nobel Prizes we've already discussed, people thought atoms were as small as it got. Well, now... We know the existence of other subatomic particles, right? We know that they're made up of stuff. So we've managed to figure out that the atom's not the smallest thing. And now we're starting to understand exactly what those things are, exactly what their charge is. Is it, do they come in quantized states only? Do they come in sort of half values? Can you get one and a half electrons? So these experiments, and this one in particular, proved that these charges and these electrons don't come in half charges, right? They only come in discrete quantized uh, uh, amounts of, of charge. So there is a fundamental unit of charge now known, and that is the charge on an electron. And without that, a lot of electronic design gets really difficult. So while this didn't necessarily have direct application and give us a new direction to go in in uh, anything from you know, the the, uh, the work that Einstein did and others, what it did was it backed all that work up and it said, hey, yeah, great. Now that you've got all the science and all the theory that will eventually someday lead to the photoelectric effect being applied to solar cells, now we understand exactly what that charge is that we're going to get and we can run calculations and do things with it to make engineering decisions. And that is one of the coolest things that came out of this project. Now, what else did this particular man do? 
So he wasn't finished after his oil drop experiment. Remember, he won the prize in 1923 for work he did in 1914, which was, was fantastically uh, rece well received. Everybody thought it was great. Uh, replication done all over the world, which is exactly what you want to see. You want to see scientific experiments that can be repeated by other people and other people get exactly the same answer you got. That's fantastic science. If, if you can do it, nobody else can. That's not as good. But his work was repeated by everybody and they all got the same, the same answer, which was great. But he wasn't done. In 1921, two years before he was awarded the Nobel Prize, he left the University of Chicago to become the director of the Norman Bridge Laboratory of Physics out of the California Institute of Technology, which is located in Pasadena, California. It's a beautiful part of the country. Uh, when he was there, he undertook a study on radiation that a professor, that a physicist named Victor Hess had detected from among, coming from outer space. And Millikan proved that this radiation was indeed extraterrestrial in origin, not coming from little green men, but coming from the, back, the, the uh, cosmic background. In fact, he named them cosmic rays, which everybody has probably heard of. And as the chairman and executive council of Caltech, which was the school's governing body at the time, he worked from 1921 until his retirement in 1945 to turn that school into one of the leading in research institutions in the United States, which I think anybody alive today that's active in the research world will tell you it is still among the leading research institutions in the United States. I hope everybody has enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to click subscribe and like and all that fun stuff. It really does help us out with the algorithms, and we will see you on the next one.